Next on the docket to profile from our trading team is event trader Gavin McGuire. And in this segment, we're going to do things uh, maybe a little bit differently than we have with some of the other traders because Gavin does a lot of work on the in-play page. And not only is he going to give you uh, a background of, uh, to his trading and his style and whatnot, but he's going to help you implement some of the things that he does on the in-play page and some of the things that he does on Trader Audio and how you can incorporate that into your own trading. So with that said, I'm going to welcome back in Gavin McGuire. What's up, Jim? How are you doing today? I'm doing quite well. So you and I communicate uh, quite a bit, so therefore I have a really good sense of some of the things that you do, but not everyone may have that um, you do a ton of things on the page uh, you do the day ahead you do the week ahead you do earnings recaps we do things in the morning Gavin so why don't you just give everyone a little bit of a backdrop into uh, what you do and then we'll break into your style and then how to integrate all that uh, yeah so uh, basically just thought you know this is all set for an introduction into each one of the traders here and I'll break into my different styles and everything but uh, one of the things that I think is important is to understand how the site works and uh, the best ways to follow each one of the traders I know that's a feedback that we get just given the style of in play um, it could be a little bit confusing so I just want to lay out some of the things um, that I do as a framework each and every day and each and every week that will hopefully make it a little bit easier to follow my commentary. Uh, first off, I provide a day ahead comment each morning and at the end of the day too, in which uh, we will break down some of the different key earnings as well as the macro events. That way you should end in addition upcoming events such as hearings, Fed speakers, anything along those lines. So I'd always make sure to have that up on your day because the idea of this is to make sure that we don't get sideswiped by any sort of comments or, or it, that, that come across the wire or events that come across the wire or uh, news items that could be out on the day. And also just to recap some of the earnings that could be moving throughout the course and I'll break into that a little bit more with Jim as we go along. Uh, then there's the week ahead comment to this same theory as the day ahead I provide this on Friday afternoons and um, you know that is just to lay out the entire week of what we're going to be looking at in order to uh, lay the groundwork for what could be moving the markets and uh, you know I just want to emphasize these comments for following for people just because I do provide trade ideas in there I might not always take them on the page but the entire point of this comment particularly on the earnings side is to point out price action that I'm expecting to play out and then of course the week ahead just to make sure that people are aware of the ebb and flow that could be uh, looking at so I just wanted to highlight these comments right off the bat in order to make sure people are well aware of them coming out and use them kind of as a guideline to follow me and the entire trading week too as we try to lay that out all right Gavin so before we get into your trading style why don't you just give us a little background and uh, about how you got here uh, yeah, I mean, I've basically been in the industry for over 20 years now. I started back in 1998 at Zach's Investment Research. I was actually on the sales side over there. Um, 1998 was, of course, the beginning of the Internet bubble. And, um, you know, it was, we had a lot of business going through. I, it was at the start of the advertising era for um, for them as well so I uh, really got my uh, teeth dirty though by selling the content which was the earnings per share numbers uh, free cash flow breakdowns and all the different reports so uh, pretty strong fundamental background as I'd work with the development team and what we'd sell into the different companies and that's kind of how I got my start into earnings and into fundamental data in the industry um, then I did a stint of trading markets and that brought me really into the trading realm where I uh, just going around um, working on um, the sales for them as well 
for different options products and everything and that really started to get me into uh, studying the different types of trading techniques that were out there and um, really started trading myself this would have been in the early 2000s so I got to see a lot of that rise of the internet and um, collapse too and just kind of see how creative destruction and irrational exuberance got to play out so, so it was a pretty interesting start to the career it's a difficult one because you just kind of assumed everything was going to go up, but a little bit of an eye-opener that would really uh, pay dividends for me moving forward into different uh, cycles in the economy. Started a briefing in 2003. Uh, primarily as an earnings analyst, but I uh, was always working closely with um, Damon for post and research earnings previews and everything. So I, you know, I continued my trading um, there, uh, uh, always in the backdrop. But once we launched Briefing Trader in 2006, then that was when I got involved pretty heavily on the trader side. And really, since the inception of the product, I've been working with the Briefing Trader and um, you know doing my own trading techniques, uh, managing money for people. So, uh, you know, it's all things that have really just kind of, I've been using and gaining experience both on the macro and micro side for really the last 20 years now in, in the uh, industry. All right. So even though your trading moniker is Event Trader, that's not all the strategies that you have up your sleeve. Why don't you give us a little background on uh, some of the things that you actually trade? Uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, uh, you, you know, I do trade macro and micro futures. I'm uh, probably, I think, the only one on the site that really does it on a regular basis. I know Brett's usually focused on the macro futures side. Well, uh, all the other traders are pretty much just strictly equities. I know a few uh, perhaps commodity ETFs here and there. So, uh, and the reason why I do that is I do have a, a top-down trading style uh, that I that I use and uh, a lot of it as, as Jim mentioned is event driven but also a couple of different patterns that I look for too so my general working method is I start with the top and see where the markets are overall trying to figure out um, is there risk on or risk off aversion and that will play into a lot into my trading style in terms of where I'm willing to um, take risks for instance if I see a risk on trade I might be um, more open to trading one of the cloud stocks right now as, as opposed to um, you know a safer a safer name that's not seen as much volatility that might not play uh, play out and then of course when there's a risk off trade then I might be looking for something more in the staple section or something a little bit safer so and I also incorporate into the macro style what is moving the markets you know is is it the is it the financials is is it uh technicals is is it um, healthcare is is it energy plays and try to basically hammer down looking for plays via that top down approach and then look for the proper names in the different uh, industries that I want to trade so uh, you know it's really that top down approach that I use that I uh, like to try to unearth different finds on the micro side and in the equities by looking at the different sectors that are uh, really moving the macro one direction or the other and then fine tuning that search for individual plays or possibly ETFs in that sector uh, you know some prime examples of this would be energy that I've seen lifting off here and getting in the XLE recently and uh, just kind of using that approach for finding the opportunities and then the other way of course is uh, the just event uh, driven moniker as I've been given particularly around earnings you know I go back to 1998 when I was putting together the reports for Zach's investment research and uh, then obviously starting here mainly as an equity analyst posting earnings and and then coming up with Damon to create the earnings previews here that you see on a daily basis. Um, you know, this has all been incorporated, and just from following that of those events for the last 20 years has really provided me some insight into how um, how uh, these stocks tend to react around the earnings. So, uh, using items like that, certainly conference call commentary, guidance, uh, anything along those lines to really kind of provide and 
uh, to provide any sort of volatility in a name. And then it's all about looking at the different sort of charts and what I feel comfortable with either on a daily or 60 minute or five minute chart. So um, I, uh, that's basically some of the things that I'm looking at when I am trading. All right, let's take a deeper dive into your individual styles. We're going to back up a little bit and go to the macro trading style. And this is where you take a top-down approach. So what are the key things that you're looking at when you do this? So as many of you know, I do that sentiment and flow show with Brett. Um, and that's going to be in about two and a half hours, if anybody's uh, wondering. Um, so what we do in that is basically we're looking for positioning and uh, in the markets via equities and bonds, and then what the sentiment is to see if that backs that up. And you know, using those methods, it's really methods that I've used from that I've uh, followed Brett in for the last few years, and um, then looking at key technical levels that uh, they're trading around, and try to use that to uh, trade futures. Uh, usually, the S and P is my uh, typical vehicle, but I also look at the Nasdaq, uh, the Dow. I don't trade it. Uh, trade as much, but um, really what I like to do on that is to use uh, the futures to kind of uh, amplify the trading and uh, my exposure there, especially if I'm using it as a hedge against the portfolio. I usually don't like to, in my longer term portfolio, um, guess tops and bottoms and names such as a Google or something along those lines. I'd prefer to try to hedge using uh, futures in order to trade around any potential downside volatility and that's a lot of the things that I look at from the macro trading um, style. Also use a lot of the um, of the levels, Jim, that you and Scott put out on a daily basis in order to help provide key levels. But uh, for the most part, it's usually uh, more intraday futures trading. That I'll put in a swing here and there. But um, you, you know, I like using the overall macro as a read on the markets. And then, as I said, the next level that I ge generally tend to whittle down to is what sectors are moving within that macro. All right, so that leads us to your micro trading. And this process is really what we do a lot in uh, our pre-market commentary where we'll look at individual names and, of course, m majority of it is focused on earnings or some type of key event. Well, why don't you tell me some of the things that you look for outside of just earnings? Yeah, I mean, I do like earnings as a primary um, story because I feel like that sets kind of the trend for the entire quarter for the most part. Um, you know, you take like a Grubhub, for instance, just today where it got hammered. And, uh, you know, the next three months is going to be all speculation about uh, their income and why it came in so low and whether or not they can improve that. So uh, I like using that as the basis for the quarter. But then as we uh, move along, I generally tend to look for uh, chart setups that uh, could play out, either a breakdown um, below moving averages, for instance, or some sort of bottoming pattern. And uh, the bottoming pattern is one that I, I definitely like. We'll get into a few of the names that I've recently gone out on in, in that uh, kind of encapsulate that bottoming pattern going on. But um, when I start seeing a theme in a space that I, that I like, uh, and this will usually be based around conference call commentary, on running news, analyst research, whatever it might be, um, and then just watching it, the play out in the charts. That's when I really start focusing in on individual names within a sector that I find to be viable. For instance, First Solar right now, that's one that um, I recently just took along. Uh, it was post the, earn, the earnings drop, but the long-term story was in play. But uh, we had con we continually talked about some of the strength in solar, and I just found find this to be one of the better names out there. So, um, you know, that's kind of a way where I use an earnings call, a conference call, and then a sector overwatch to kind of encapsulate every um, every item in my trade. Um, the technicals didn't line up as directly, but I don't need a confirmation across the board on everything to always get into a trade. That's my preference, uh, just because I find them to work out at the highest um, degrees. But 
uh, you, you know, it, it's it's just following that story and understanding the story and then matching it up with the um, charts that really is where I try to uh, garner most of my trades from. Yeah, and that sounds very similar to some of the things that Trend Tracker was doing. So it just reiterating uh, the process here um, that uh, some of the guys on the desk reinforced for sure. And let's see, you'll also make some comments on... Uh, you do a very good job of sniffing out some of these rumors, whether they're true or um, maybe some we shouldn't take too seriously, um, and you incorporate that into some of your uh, some of your trading and commentary as well. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, Jim, I would say that uh, you, you know one of my primary items is just following rumors and headlines as they come across, particularly on the macro side. And um, that is one thing that I'll definitely incorporate into the trade. And I don't like to trade the rumors as much, but um, if we, the macro and futures in particular, that's something that I'll be more in tune to trade on a headline if I think that markets are overreacting or if I just feel that it, it's a little bit of a plant at, at a key breakout or breakdown level that kind of embellish the move. And that's one of the things that I'll try to uh, sift through. Um, I know uh, Brett and I talk a lot about it. In fact, he was hitting me up about a headline while we're on here. So uh, that's one of, the th one of the services that I'll definitely be providing a lot on audio for people to kind of go through and uh, and just kind of recap what the headline was, whether or not it's news, whether or not it's important to the markets, and try to base some of the um, some of the indice trading off of that. All right, let's run through some examples here. We'll start with FedEx. Yeah, so this is one where I got involved after the UPS uh, uh, trade, and uh, th this is a perfect example of um, the top-down approach where uh, FedEx, of course, had a really poor quarter. Uh, stock got hammered on it, fell below the um, 200 moving average, broke below the 50, and just uh, kept getting whittled down to 140. Then um, we saw analysts come out. I think there was a double downgrade right around that 140 area, and the stock just held in there nicely. And then I started going through a lot of the earnings for the transports, and um, you know, was talking a lot with Scott about uh, some of the action that we're seeing there. And then UPS came out with its report, and uh, the linearity for the quarter was impressive, and that um, led me into the FedEx trade, where I was seeing it working its way off the bottom, seeing the transportation improving here, and looking at this as a, one that could break above the uh, 150 area and uh, push higher. So we've already banked some nice profits in this trade here. But this is a perfect example of a top-down um, post-earnings trade in which I uh, just jumped in and got involved with. All right. Uh, AMTD was another one that you got involved in recently. Yeah, so this one would be more along the lines, of course, of a headline-driven uh, uh, impact. This was when everybody went to um, went to the uh, zero-cost uh, brokerage fees here. Uh, basically, just uh, the entire space got sold off pretty heavily. And, um, you know, I just felt that it opened up a buying opportunity in AMTD based around some of the research I was doing in terms of the percentage of revenues it had. But then taking a look at the valuation and um, also looking at, um, at, at uh, some of the M&A activity that been, had been around it in the past. So this is a typical example of an event-driven uh, trade that I thought was overdone, that the selling had kind of petered out around this 34 level. So I jumped in, and uh, now we're sitting on some pretty nice gains of about 12% on this final piece. Uh, I've covered it all through earnings and the conference call, and uh, just kind of watching it now here on the, more on the technical side than anything else. All right, Netflix. Uh, Netflix, this is one that I uh, just kind of jumped in before earnings. Um, and this is a perfect example, too, of trying to work out um, my commentary and using it to your advantage where, uh, you know, you know I, I broke into the Netflix looking for a rally in front of earnings, and we certainly got that. This was based off of just the counter trend cycle that I was looking for. 
uh, following the Q2 report. And what happened was we started seeing a bottoming pattern in this 260 area. And uh, Netflix did a long history of reporting poor earnings around uh, price increase quarters and then having to bounce back. And I figured that we could see the sentiment seep in, and we certainly did. Stock uh, saw a nice reaction to earnings, popped over the 50, and uh, we turned in a nice profit on this. And then in that morning comment, Jim, me and you were talking about this. And me and Jim every day go over the earnings that I comment on, providing some trading opportunities. And we called out that 318 to 320 level for a possible reversal. And sure enough, the stock got uh, hit by about 45 points back down to the low end of that 270 area. Um, so, you know, it's just something if you're able to follow the commentary on, you would have made probably about a total of 65 to 70 points uh, in each direction off that trade. All right. Uh, Cleveland Cliff, CLF was another one. Yeah, this would be one that um, would be uh, another one of the top-down approaches, uh, and this definitely had one of the more uh, had one of those bottoming patterns that we we're looking at. Uh, still in on this trade, but obviously we could see that 675 level is just really holding surf pretty tightly there. And then we started seeing some more commentary coming out about uh, materials starting to see an improvement. Certainly, some of the steel names were uh, getting a bounce, and then minor comments from. Um, from the Caterpillar call really is what tipped me off to this. So uh, that's kind of a full and, co and uh, fully using the top-down macro approach and then uh, connecting that with earnings, with conference call commentary, and then looking for names in the space that I really uh, like to chart for. So uh, Cleveland Cliffs would probably be a perfect example of using the full breadth of macro, of macro top-down to the micro uh, earnings conference call commentary in order to uncover a play. All right, and then the last one we'll uh, mention is CLDR, Cloudera. Yeah, Cloudera, this is more of a technical-based one where it's just watching it work its way off that five level. And, um, you know, this is a bottoming pattern, Jim. I know uh, we talk a lot about it. That I'll incorporate this a lot in my uh, longer-term swing portfolios. And um, I'm put, uh, posting my focus list shortly after this call, and uh, that'll have an update on all those reports. But uh, you'll see uh, that's a pretty typical pattern for what I like to do for my uh, longer-term swing trades in uh, Cloudera. It's been moving in a nice sideways direction above its 50. As long as it continues in this pattern, I expect that we could see this um, breaking a little bit higher. All right. Now, uh, let us know how to integrate some of the things that you do on the Employ page and discuss, and uh, just give us a, a snapshot of what they are and how to use it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, again, uh, you know, a lot of the comments that I post here include earnings previews, and then I'll uh, post some of the, some commentary around Fed speak, around the daily flow of headlines. So, uh, for new specific items as well. So, just kind of the idea behind this is just really filtering out that white noise and cutting to the chase on uh, whether or not this is good news, or bad news for either the markets or for stock, and um, you know. Basically, cut to the chase around a comment and what the technicals are doing in order to see if uh, the market did indeed get this right or if there could be a little bit of an arbitrage opportunity, if you will, for any moves in the wrong direction or maybe even trading off of uh, headlines that could be old that are uh, being viewed as new by the market. So there are a few other things that I'm looking at on that front. All right. And so, again, just to recap, you know, you have your day ahead. Uh, we also have your week ahead. Uh, this is something that you post on uh, Friday afternoon so that people can get prepped for the weekend. Exactly, exactly. So uh, that, that's the best way to follow me. And then, uh, obviously, anytime anybody has any questions, by all means, feel free to write in. All right, Gavin. And just as uh, another little add-on here, you and I do – audio segments in the morning and the goal for that is to get everyone uh, up to speed with what might be moving and shaking in the markets and then you do similar thing with Scott at the end of the day right uh, yeah yeah so basically from 9 to 9 30 Jim is me and you 
Uh, Scott and I are usually on from 3.30 to 4. And then we'll also do a lot of the after-hours action that's going on, uh, provide some real-time um, commentary around some of the earnings uh, as best we can. As you know, I'm also here posting earnings uh, to help out the team. So um, can, can be tough to follow it, but uh, any sort of insight that we have on a given move on uh, certainly the earnings report we provide. All right, Gavin. And... For those out there who may be wondering, how can someone listening contact you? Uh, well, right there up on the site, you can see the feedback or questions. You can send it either directly to me at gmcguire at briefing.com, or you can send it to the whole trader team at briefingtrader at briefing.com, or you can use the talk to us feature if you want, and um, just click in. Uh, try to leave your address whenever possible. It makes it easier for us to respond to the questions directly to uh, the sub write -ins. So uh, there are a few ways that you could uh, get get those at, out. And uh, as you can see on the slide there, it shows exactly where that talk to us button is.